Shalom, I'm John Carney Roth. I'm Abdon A. Hill. And we want to thank you for joining us today with Through the Elders, I of the Elders Discussion Series. We're really hoping that today is going to be an interesting taking a look at the mark of Cain, just exactly what that is. I, I want to start off first, Anthony, by saying that I found um, something very interesting when I was looking on YouTube about this subject. First of all, you can't really find hardly, I only found a handful of teachings, believe it or not, mm -hmm. on the what is the mark of Cain. Now, there may have been more somewhere deeper in the list but I didn't find it, you know. Uh, I didn't go all the way to the end, but I went quite a ways. I only found about five, and it was kind of ambiguous, except for one guy who I think has it correct. And he says, you know, when you look into the scriptures, you find there is no explanation by Yahweh what the mark of Cain actually is. Mm -hmm. So when you look into the Hebrew, it says it's an omen. It's a sign. Okay, but an omen and a sign can be a, a physical mark of some attribute that is placed on a person or could be a spiritual dimension. And so I think the danger is, is that when you start focusing on a physical mark, you wind up sometimes sacrificing the real meaning of what the spiritual mark is of the mark of Cain. Mm -hmm. In other words, his nature. And, and that's what I think we really want to focus on today is what are the attributes that are that mark the nature of Cain mm -hmm. so that we can empower ourselves to understand the shortcomings that we have. And I want to say this up front that whether you're a believer or you're not a believer, we all have the nature of Cain in us. Mm -hmm. We have it at varying degrees and so forth. And some of us are just blatantly have accepted the the nature of Cain altogether and have no desire to want to go in the way of righteousness whatsoever. And so with that being said, today we're going to kind of focus more on the spiritual attributes or, or, or characteristics of, of the nature of Cain as the mark. Mm -hmm. And I think that we can see into the New Testament, if I can remember to cover it, that we're given that kind of an explanation in the New Testament about Cain, where it says, and they went by the way of Cain. Mm -hmm. And when you look up the way, what it means is the course of action that they took. Mm -hmm. In other words, they were duplicating, they were replicating exactly what Cain had done, but this is now in the end times. Mm -hmm. So... Although it's interesting to know if Yahweh had put a physical mark on him somehow, and I heard one guy say there was a mark on the forehead, there's nothing in Scripture mm -hmm. that you could prove that that's the case. Right. However, when we get to the end of this discussion today, we are going to address a mark in a physical sense mm -hmm. and a spiritual sense that takes you to another place. So with that being said, uh, that's kind of my opening in, in getting this thing going. So whatever you want to feed into this, uh, you got the floor. Well, praise Yahweh. Uh, for me, uh, with my experience and my relationship with you, when you um, came up with this subject, and I'm thinking, you know, because I understand you as looking at stuff from a prophetic nature. Right. You know, and I'm just not built or geared up in that in that um realm and so for me when Yahweh uh found me he made it personal with me so every discussion that we have I tend to make it personal that I can understand the power that it took from Yahweh to deliver me from from all kind of bondage, and so this subject here, it 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 hit me with a, a phrase of recognizing authority, uh, coming under authority, because that was for me that was the mark that was on me. It was hard for me to submit to authority, and I wanted to make things work in the way that I wanted them to work. And regardless of how 
somebody tried to uh, warn me of the consequences, I was determined to make it work and get the result that were in my mind that I wanted and you was going to accept me like this or else, mm -hmm. you know. And so it, it this subject, it really was personal to me. So when I read to the scriptures, it took me to the on this journey back to when my journey began. And I was able to see uh, and he gave me this this scripture that kind of uh, verified it for me. Uh, uh, Paul wrote about all scripture that was written aforetime was written for our learning that we through patience and Comf and hoping the scriptures might find comfort. And the more I find out about myself, the more thankful I become. And so for me, this is a, a opportunity that if anybody can bear witness and just see how far that Yahweh has bought them, then you can see the work that he is doing to erase this mark out of your life. Baruch Hashem. Mm -hmm. So Yahweh had put this, this uh, topic on my heart several months ago. Mm -hmm. And then about a week or so back, whatever it was, when we were talking, I really felt very strongly like he was impressing upon me, okay, enough is enough. It's time to deal with this subject. And lo and behold, uh, this week, at least in this, well, actually not just in this country, I'll go into this in a second, but in this country, we've been going through a lot of upheavals, politically, social unrest. Uh, we had this um, shooting of these children in Tennessee by, um, uh, what do you call it? A transsexual or whatever the person was. I, I don't know that much about it. Um, but ironically, as we're filming this today, mm -hmm. it was announced the other day that the LGBTQ community somewhere in the country, I don't know exactly where, um, is holding a rally. And it's about bearing guns, and it's called the Day of Vengeance, if I have it right. And the theme of it is anyone who does not agree with our lifestyle is considered to be our enemy. And we have a right to defend ourselves and shoot them if we have to. If I have that right, that's what I believe. Mm -hmm. And that's a demonstration that's going on today in Yahweh's Holy Sabbath in a nation that was blessed by uh, Yahweh by an Abrahamic blessing, which is now running out on this country. And mm -hmm. I think that's the main reason why you're seeing this country is going into this downfall very quickly, because those blessings are being removed because we're becoming so immoral, which is the hallmark point of this whole uh, discussion today, which is the mark of Cain. Choose your sacrifice or it eventually will choose you. Mm -hmm. So when we come into this world, we come into this world with the idea from Yahweh's perspective that you're supposed to be a sacrifice. Now you can accept the sacrifice that was designed for you, which means you're to become a sacrifice yourself to honor Yahweh, or you become a sacrificial uh uh, person for Satan himself mm -hmm. and whatever his agenda is. So there's two marks. The Yahweh has marked his people and their attributes for that. And then Satan has marked his people and they have attributes for that. Mm -hmm. So the story of Cain comes down to that Yahweh was telling Cain that you have to be a master over your own sins. And today what you're seeing is in these groups that I'm talking about, oh, by the way, and Israel had a whole bunch of LBGT, several thousand, demonstrating in Israel the other day, and they almost stormed Netanyahu's house because they want to overthrow the government. Hmm. So there seems to be this rise in the LGBT community around the world where they're becoming violent now. You know, they used to be in the the closet, so to speak, they came out of the closet, that got tolerated, and now we're getting to a point where they're starting to rise up and they're starting to ex ex exercise their so-called rights to now oppress other people who don't agree with them. Mm -hmm. Well, to me, that's the mark of Cain mm -hmm. because it's self-indulgence, it's based on hatred for other people, which comes from self-hatred of yourself, 
and you can read that in Romans chapter one. You know, it goes through that whole. We're not gonna we're not gonna bombard everybody with a ton of scriptures today, mm -hmm. but we're gonna get into some interesting scriptures today, and we're gonna elaborate on it. But one of these days, we're all going to have to make a decision about what are we going to do with our particular situation. Yes. And I was watching yesterday a well-known person on, uh, t not TV, but they have a, a podcast. They have their own network. And uh, he was saying that we need to be careful not to be drawn into all this stuff. And we need to, print, uh, we need to repent before God. Okay, well, that sounds all well and good, but the bottom line is, how do you define that repentance? How do you get rid of the nature of Cain? What does that look like if you really want to be right with Yahweh mm -hmm. and with Yeshua? Okay, well, if I was be able to talk to this man who I admire this man for what he stands for. It's just that uh, most of all these people, I say all these people I hear like that, they don't go to the far end of the spectrum of how do you really define that? Mm -hmm. Because if I was to say you have to keep the Ten Commandments, well, now you're going to have a, a problem with that person. Right. Because they're not going to see it that way. Well, you know what I'm going to say? What I'm going to say is, according to what Yahweh says in Scripture, basically, let the beatings continue. Mm-hmm. See, these beatings are coming on us because we're immoral. As the, I'm just speaking for this nation right now. Mm -hmm. We're immoral, and we don't want to give up our lifestyle. And a lot of people I talk to, they work. You know, you remember that old song from the 80s? Um, uh, Working for the Weekend by Loverboy or whatever. I forget what it was. It's a catchy tune. But it was about working all week long. And then mm. when Friday at 5 o'clock comes, the whistles and the bells go off. It's mm. now time to go party for the weekend. You know? Mm. So you go out to your favorite uh, bar and grill. You sit with your buddies and your friends. You have a little food. You drink beer. You watch sports on the 500 TVs that are surrounding, you know, the whole thing. And I'm not against sitting down mm -hmm. to enjoy yourself a little bit. But this is the nature of what Americans have relegated their life to, which is just partying it up. But the party is now over. The signs are all around us that our society is falling apart. The government is becoming more tyrannical now. They're changing laws left and right. Look what they did to the ex-president the other day. They indicted him based on no proof of anything. I'm not going to get into that about being for Trump, against Trump. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying it's now become clear on both sides of the aisle that what they did is they broke all precedents in the history of this country of breaking the law to establish a new law. Mm -hmm. And so this is what's going on with the mark of Cain. The hatred, the anger, the vitriol, the revenge, the pride, all this stuff you want to talk about is now about punishing everybody else for the way that I feel. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get into some of this when we psychologically start breaking down this storyline of Cain and how he got to be the way he was and what the consequences were and Yahweh's um, remedy for what how he could have got out of that. So the question that I have for the people out there is how long are you going to postpone your current state your of lifestyle that you're indulging in before you finally say, okay, enough is enough. Because I heard a lot of people say, enough is enough. I'm done. This is it. I can't take it no more. Okay, but what does that mean? Do you have the answer? So far, I'm not hearing anybody with the actual answer on how to counteract what is happening to them. Mm -hmm. And what is it they exactly they got to do? Just repenting, saying I want to repent, doesn't mean anything. Because that's different for every person. And so what we want to get to here today is explain what real repentance really looks like. And that there are signs or a mark that marks that kind of person as is di diametrically opposite for those who have the mark of Cain or the nature of Cain, we could say it that way. Mm -hmm. And so there are two marks in this end time that we're dealing with. And so I was going through uh, some scriptures and I forgot all about this set of scriptures we're going to read right now. Mm -hmm. 
I didn't remember that I even had these, and I've translated it from the Hebrew into the English uh, in the red, and well, people will be able to see this on the screen in a minute, where it's a prophecy about rebellious Gentiles in the end times who are going to accept their appointed sacrifice. Mm -hmm. At some point, Yahweh has already written this, this is going to happen. Now, could it be that this is the bride-to-be, the woman that goes to the place of safety to get cleaned up for three and a half years because she has so much Babylon and this world inside her that she has to be cleaned up before she can marry the Messiah or not? I don't know. I know it's going to be a mixed multitude. These are Gentiles. There may be a lot of Jews and modern-day Israelites that are mixed in with all this. I don't know. where It doesn't really go that far, and I'm not going to expound beyond the, the concept that it's a speculation. But anyway, in 1 Kings chapter 8, 